last time we left our party, they had just gotten back to their inn to rest for the night. Uh, over at the Stens Inn, and the barkeep seemed very, very intent to take care of themselves, to kind of store them away. He was barricading windows and hiding. And the party had recently learned about a play called The Weeping Maiden. And to look into it, they had sent off a letter to their magister. Now, Cornelia, how did you get this letter from Red Row to your magister when you don't quite know where they are? Uh, well... Any answer is fine. Like, to be clear, this was not, like, I, I, that's not meant to be a punishing thing. Like, well, how'd you do it? No, I want to know, how did you do it? All right, let me think about this. Um, well, I think he has a penchant for birds. And I think, in fact, our magistrate has his own specific bird who um, knows his location. A carrier pigeon of sorts. Who brought it to him? Ah, oh, so you sent the message via carrier pitch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh -oh. welcome back, Drayvon. Or Drayvon. Yeah, Drayvon. Yeah, um, uh, my, my Discord crashed. Oh, it is fine. I expect mine to hap happen at some point while we do this. Uh, I have kind of just prepared that it will occur. Uh, so, y'all get. Like, we're going to say y'all's night kind of ends at you getting the letter out, and y'all, like, stopped and rested. Okay, then. Um, and uh, next day comes, and Cornelia, as you wake up, there is a large metal key hanging on the inside door to your room. Okay. And as you look around, you would swear there was only one door in your room went to bed. There are now three. <laughs> okay. Choose door number three. <laughs> to the left of the bed is one door. In front okay. of the door is another. And then okay. behind the bed is the third. Probably the most conspicuous one, uh, Drayvon. I don't know if I want to go with number three. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, what would you like to do? Um, can I consult my party? Currently, you are by yourself. You woke up alone. Oh, we're not in the same room. No. Uh, y'all, y'all were given like a little mother-in-law suite esque above the the bar that had like four separate bedrooms. Okay. Wow, that's nice. Oh, oh boy. That is very nice oh. for a, a tavern in the rundown part of the city. The ministry yeah, well, has money. Yeah, people people are meant to be hiding up here. Yeah. Chillish has his own room. Nobody. <laughs> Chillish has his own Chillish pad. All right. Um. Gosh, there's one behind the bed. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming it swings out and not in, so like I could open it. You would presume so from first glance. Okay, can I? Peek into the door behind the bed. Uh, would you, if you like gently put your hand on it, you can tell it's locked and you might need to use the key. Ah, uh, okay. Can I use the key? <laughs> Yes, um, as you open the door, you see an opulent room, um, about 20 feet square, a bright red carpet with golden tassels on the edge, luxurious, like, cushy leather chairs abound in the room, a box of fine cigars sits on a table in the center, and you think you hear music. 
Okay. Um, can I perhaps tie some bed sheets up um, and put them around my waist before I go in here? You are welcome so to. Okay, I would like to do that because I'm not a huge fan of getting lost in here. But I would like to do that and then go into the room. If you step in, you think you hear someone singing just a little out of view. <laughs> Can I look for them? Oh, yes. As you step in, the floor is hardwood floor that feels like well maintained underfoot. The cart, the little rug in the middle is soft, lush. But about four steps in, you feel a sharp pain go through your left foot. Oh. A single shard of glass was left in the rug. Oh. It doesn't cause any notable pain. Like, mechanically, there is no effect, but it hurts. Right. Do you pull it out, or do you leave it in your foot for now? A shard of glass? Small, like, um... size of a quarter. I'm going to pull it out. Okay. As you pull it out, it, it gives some resistance. But as you look at it, after it's been removed from your foot, I think you see another reflection behind you. Okay. Can I turn around very quickly? Yes, and you no longer see the door you entered from, and the sheet is just connected <laughs> to the wall. Uh, and as you it? look, there's no one there. What would you like to do? Is there anything in the... Um, is there anything in the glass? Can I still see anything in the glass? Every time you look in it, you see someone behind you. Okay. But when Are you they turn... looking at me? They're approaching you. I recognize them. You see it as the face that has haunted the corner of your eyes for most of your life. Just some ghoul or boogeyman that you've occasion that scared you since you were a child. Not like, you know, like that you think you hear someone at night so you run upstairs as a kid? Yeah. It's what you've assigned to that almost in your mind. It is something to that effect. Oh. What would it look like? Uh, it doesn't it doesn't look like anything it's like black space with eyes it's like a big um almost moon shaped face but you only know that it's moon shaped it's not actually there it's really horrible <laughs> um you start to as you start to look around you realize something isn't right mhm mm since you realize you're in here, have you untied yourself? Mm -hmm. Uh, which direction would you walk? Let's assume forward from the direction you entered is north. So, back towards where the door was would be south. Your right would be east. Your left would be west. Let me write this down really quick. North would be uh, heading away. Yes, said? away from where the door was. South would be back towards the door. East would be to your right from when you entered the door. Left would be West would be to your left from where you came from. All right. I want to go south towards where I came from. You start to feel like that gets longer and longer. <laughs> well, you might have only taken five steps in. You're now taking 30, 40, 50 steps. And now there's a corner. Just a blind corner to the right. A blind corner to Like, the you right. can't see around it from where you are. You just see all of a sudden there's a wall, and it, you can tell it goes to the right. Okay. And the right is which direction? Uh, on uh, the from this perspective, because you've now turned around, right would be west. Or sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, your right would be going towards yes. the west. Okay. I will approach the corner. You see a large wall. With letters written in it. 
seemingly in blood. Uh. I had been passing alone on horseback through a singularly dreary tract of country, and at length found myself, as the shades of evening drew on, within the view of the melancholy house. And you have not heard those words to your knowledge. They seem strange. Is there any way I would recognize the handwriting? Hmm. Thinking. Um. Sorry, I'm looking for my spider cheat sheet because I forgot the name of skills because I'm having an absolute brain fart moment. Um, That's okay. I just opened the wrong tab. I am distinctly having one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're oh, telling yeah. me I'm in a, um, a freaking roomless room. <laughs> uh, yes, you could recognize it if you choose to investigate. Okay. I would and like to I would say because so many people I would assume you know are around religion, you can add your uh, religion to this roll. So that would let you do oh, 3d10. I got a roll to recognize. All right. Yes. Now, reminder, if you would like to roll, remember the, the risks rolls to carry the chance of stress. Okay. Well, I got to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> got to do something. <laughs> All right. 3d10. Oh, wait, hold on. I might have done this wrong. Okay. Ooh, 10. Excellent. Um, Excellent. <laughs> as you sit there, you realize that's your handwriting. No! Oh my god! <laughs> uh, all right. And while you're sitting there pondering, the letters coalesce into a piece of mahogany and a doorknob appears. <sighs> and it goes to above your bed. And all of a sudden, Gravity realigns, and you flop down into your bed and wake up. Oh my god. Wait, I was asleep the whole time? Maybe. Okay, I would like to choose to now scream. Fair. Uh, <laughs> Javon and Cervezas, you hear the sound of a scream coming from Cornelia's room. Uh, was I sleeping at this time? Um, it would be early enough. You honestly flip a coin. You might be asleep. You might have started waking up. Gotcha. So it was like early morning. Like, let's call it 630 in the morning. Sun's out. If the sun was visible from our location. Yeah, like, it would just be early sunrise. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Six or seven. Um, yeah, I would be up. Okay. Cervasus uh, is apparently already up and doing his morning routine when a scream pierces the, ser the serenity. Now, I have an important question. How much alcohol does Cervasus' morning routine entail? <laughs> we gotta pregame the pregame, so. Probably like two beers. Fair. <laughs> but you know, like with an egg cracked in them, so it's healthy. Ah, uh, yes. Basically it's milk. food. <laughs> uh, yuck. Uh. Like two, two raven eggs cracked in each one. So what do you do? Grab my lamps and rush to the sound. We're all in uh, separate rooms, right? Yes. But there's like a uh, common area well, kind of connecting them. Gotcha. So yeah, I guess I would exit uh, my uh, my room area and kind of run towards where I heard uh, Cornelia <sighs> screaming from. Now, as y'all approach, you, you both see on the outside of the door is a large metal key hanging by a string. Wait. 
the way I've seen this one. <laughs> so, like, we both go to exit our rooms and we see a key. On the outside of Cornelia's door, as you approach Cornelia's room. Oh, okay. We see the key outside of her door. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Was it there when we went to bed last night? No. You would recognize that it is far too large for the doors of this building. Interesting. I uh, examine the key. Or I, I guess I would pick it up. It, it feels... Know, the wall or whatever. Uh, it feels yeah, very cold to the touch. It's cold iron. We're elves. We can't touch that. Um, <laughs> If you'd like to examine it like more thoroughly, you can make a roll now. Or what I would pose to you is if you take it back to your Vermissian vault, you could probably roll with mastery. Mm. Oh, I'm not this. saying you should do that, but... <laughs> I, uh, you just made me remember that I have a specific... Uh, uh, core ability that I need to do, and I am marking it here. Uh, I mean, does it at a cursory glance, does it look like I have uh, like the key would fit into Cordelia's door? No, far too no? big. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, yeah, well, why not? Let's just, uh, let's head back into the vault there and, uh, do some research real quick. Okay. Can um, I do multiple things of research, uh, while I'm there? Oh, uh, yeah, you can. Um, would you like okay. to check on Corne Cornelia first, or are you just gonna turn around and go? Oh, uh, <laughs> no, I thought, I thought I was, I had, like, blocked access. No, yeah, nope. I, yeah, I'm, I'm heading into the room. Okay, so when you grab the key, the door swings open. And everything in the room seems fine, except for Cornelia, who seems very much not fine. <laughs> um, Cornelia, could you please roll for me? Okay. Uh, I would like you to roll a... Do you have the resist skill? Resist? I do not. Let me double check, but I'm pretty sure I do not. Oh, no, I do. And do you have the domain occult? I do not. I have low society, religion, and a technology. Okay, so give me a 2d10 roll, quick. Okay. okay. Um. <laughs> so, let's see. I combust. Um. Mm. There. <laughs> that will be. You. Second. I'm reading real quick before I make a decision here. Oh, yeah. That's a failure always round. Yeah, you, you, you fail, failed. Um. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure I don't make, like, trying to make sure I make a decision that is fair to you. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I'm rolling for. You, you are now panicked. Yeah, I was panicked already. Uh, so let's see. So I'm going to clear. Yeah, we'll clear like this. Um, so... Uh, so to be clear, what that means is until you take some time to calm down, you cannot apply domains to future roles. Okay. Um, so I'm guessing I took resistance to mind. Yes, but There's also when step. you take fallout, it clears stress. So, like, you're kind of in a better spot than you were before. Yeah, that's all right. Um, this fallout is a little tough. Hi, to... Katie. So, yeah. Uh, oh, my head I'll go kind of mechanically through this later. Um. Okay. But so narratively, um, you feel your mind starting to race. Mm -hmm. The the visions of that house, the writing on the walls, the letters starting to change in order. 
the vision of this large eye looking back at you starts to fill your mind. And you don't really know what to do about it. It, it feels very foreign. Mm -hmm. Would it be possible for me to use one of my core abilities for right of respite? Um, or would maybe not be an ideal time to do that? No, absolutely you can do that. Um, okay. So I'm having to make a quick adjustment to some sheets because I made a mistake and I'm correcting it. <laughs> You're fine. Um, Okay, I think I have both of y'all. Okay, I think I have things sorted. I'd mixed up two character sheets, and I was uh, detangling for a second. <laughs> I um, almost died. <laughs> no, no, that it wasn't because that I just like marked the thing on the wrong sheet, so I had to go back and do some correction. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. so you you feel your mind racing, your head spinning. But what it? But to go back to what you mentioned, what is this core ability you would like to use, and how does it work? So my core ability is Rite of Respite, which is divine, and I create a place of stillness and healing, and once per session, I can lead my allies in a recuperative session while I hold vigil. Uh, it says, describe how you would create a comfortable healing environment and how you can help them, all allies present. I'm assuming it includes me, but maybe it doesn't if it just says all allies present restore three stress, mind, or blood. I would say, yes, that would normally help. Unless you, if you weren't panicked. Because you're panicked, you can't recall how to do these rites. Uh, as you start to try to set them up, as you try to let that muscle memory take over, you just keep spilling over your own tongue, you're dropping items, you just can't get it all put together. May I go back to bed? <laughs> yes, you can go back to bed for a bit. Um, okay. but before you do, um, Cervasus and Drivon, anything y'all would like to say or do? Y'all entered this room and saw, uh, Cornelia well, I, I freaking mean, out. First, I would like to check on Cornelia to make sure that she's doing okay. Uh, cause, yeah. you know, you did kind of, you did kind of scream <laughs> yourself awake. It appears. So, um... You know how what what's going on? What 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 happened? Did, did you just have a bad dream? Why were you screaming? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm going to be able to articulate it to them, so I would like to just um <laughs> hyperventilate and pant and say, um, the darkest room you ever seen, and then cry a little and say the demon of my nightmares and then cry a little more okay <laughs> um i don't necessarily know how, how to react to our healer being inconsolable and babbling about uh their darkest nightmares um oh can i see the key in 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 his hand yes and may I, I um, be able to recognize that as the key I used to go into that room? It is most definitely the key you used earlier to go into that room. All right. Can I uh, panically slap it out of his hand and say, uh, no, that's the dark room key? Go for it. All right. No, that's the dark room key! <laughs> <laughs> All I got for you. Can I, so do I have the ability to explain to them what happened? Oh, uh, right now it would come across in like stuttered gasp and like. So there was this room and it was, you no, know, 
Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do that to the best of my ability. But I like to think it conveys to them at least that that key opened a door to a very bad place. Okay. Um, so it seems look, that Cordelia needs an extra hour of sleep. So. If y'all look above her, um, both of you roll me a single d10. Um, Dervon and Cervasos. Godspeed. Nope. I opened the wrong window. <laughs> That's a no. Um... <laughs> Oh no. Drevon, you you see etched in the wood above Cornelia's head the following lines of text. Uh Cervasus, you only see the first line. The house invites you in. The house hates you. The house wishes to be left alone. The house is lonely. The house is in pain. The house wants your pain. The house hates you. And then, that was a friendly little message. As you blink, <laughs> it disappears. Well, it's a good thing I have a uh, photogenic memory, right? <laughs> I don't actually have that. I just that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> but or do I? Sure you do. <laughs> or do I? And, and as you sit there, and as those words process, uh, you feel a bit of a pit in your stomach. Yeah, I, I would. I would definitely have a uh, that feeling happening right now. And you're it was very ominous. Dervon, your mind would go back to that hallway you got stuck in the other day. Yeah, just yesterday. In the Vermissian, you found yourself trapped in a corridor. Things are starting to feel a little strange. I picked the key back up and uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh I I observe it in a little bit more like hesitant uh like awareness, you know, like cautiousness. And uh I put that in my pocket for the time being you notice that the key has so you know normally a key only has prongs along the axis of the key so like up and down usually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this key extends out to the left right above and below gotcha so it has like multiple directions yeah. where like the forks would stick out of and if you were to turn it like roll it in your hand the teeth would begin to almost look like a circle Interesting. Okay. Uh, I know you'd express desire to go to the Vermissian to research. Uh, well, I, I have a number of things that I would like to kind of focus and research on in my possession currently. Okay, do you want to bring anyone with you, or do you want to just go on your own? Because you can bring one passenger. Uh, I don't want to leave anyone behind by themselves so i would probably just go myself okay cuz i especially in cornelia's current state i would not want to leave her alone so i would i would uh ask that cervasus uh care and watch over her in the meantime while i go off and and do my research and you would know, um, like, you know, to prevent you from, like, accidentally dragging through, you would know that if you were to bring, like, Cornelia with you, Cornelia would deal some mental strain trying to get through the Vermissian. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to put that on, on anyone currently. Okay, Heart so, <laughs> as you go back to your room, you find a manhole cover on the floor, in the middle of the room. And that, that makes sense. Manhole cover on the second floor? Yeah, okay. and that leads straight into your vault. <laughs> right on. 
<laughs> just like a hop, skip, and a jump through the Vermissian. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Oh, there, it's, it's something that I'm used to. Yeah, doing. there are a series of ducks paddling a boat. <laughs> but nothing strange. But on the door like, to like, you... There's ducks paddling a boat. Yes, there are ducks paddling a boat. <laughs> are, they, are these, like, is the boat duck sized or is the ducks are the ducks are the size to need a boat they are human sized ducks Ew, God. Gotcha. okay but you when you get to your door to the vermissian there's a piece of tape and a little letter attached i remove the letter and and read it all houses in which men have lived and suffered and died are haunted houses. Is there uh is there like any signature or anything like that on the letter? M R R. Would I recognize those uh no. initials? Okay. Mental note on that. Stick that letter in my pocket and to the vault I go. Um, so I guess my, like, my primary thing is, uh, that I currently want to focus my attention on is that binder that I picked up last time. Okay. Yesterday. Yes. It was a, um, it was like a, a binder of instructions or like schematics or mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, uh, about some type of machinery. Yes, but to understand more fully, you will definitely need some good. Uh, you'll definitely need to roll. Um, that will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the encoding is part of. You would know, like you would recognize as a letter of the cult of the hungry deep, part of the like. Derelictus under where you are currently. Uh, that would be. And I'm very open to negotiation on this, so please, if you think you can think of something better, please let me know. I'm thinking um, a cult for the domain and investigate for the skill. How does that sound to you? That sounds perfect because I, I, uh, those are both of my current collected abilities. Okay. Um, okay, roll. So is that th uh, three or four D10? That'll be, because you are in the vault, you have mastery, so yeah, that is four D10. Okay. Uh, it's just I need to remember what the uh... splash roll. Yeah, it's yeah. There we go. It's gonna take a big too. Um. Oh, oh that seven. Seven's not terrible. Se uh, seven's not cost, terrible. Yeah, it's that fine. seven was hiding up there too. So uh, you make some progress, but you do fall for one or two of the little like traps in their incantations. So. Okay. You are going to take a very small... You are going to take some stress. I just need to actually click the correct page, so I apply it to the right spot. Um, would it be oh, visible? Now, uh, w at the beginning, what I marked earlier, because of my obsessive researcher ability, hmm? um, I did choose to ha have a knack and resist. Um, and it's more of like uh mental like fortitude okay uh, it's kind of like that was the, the the direction of where i wanted to have the the knack and, res and resist in okay i will definitely keep that in mind um for this role i don't think it's gonna be super applicable because like the knack applies to a role not necessarily the result of the role gotcha. but okay. uh i will keep that in mind and i will make sure like make sure that becomes relevant but let's see take Yeah, we're definitely going to have to do a right of respite when I calm down. <laughs> so, 
so you feel your mind race and you can you hurriedly scratch together some notes and you have an idea of what you need to do but is this energy course for you this like sense of fear and dread of what you understand it causes you to run out of your vault tripping and flying through the vermisian at a breakneck pace You clamber back out of that manhole and just breathe these heavy, labored breaths as adrenaline is just coursing through your body. But in mere moments, you're back. You feel your breath begin to slow, calm again. Feel a okay. little bit of control starting to come back. Still shaky. You definitely know that you're not ready for another trip right back into the Vermissian. Obviously. Uh, I have a question though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Would you would you say that m my uh, research on this thing here was uh, uncovering hidden information? Yes. Okay, so that's my refresh. Okay, so you also get a refresh out of it. Clever. Um, <laughs> but thankfully, the fallout kind of took care of the need for a refresh. Um, but I will okay. still do a uh, D3 refresh. Um, because you did still do the thing that your refresh is built around. Um, yeah. So, you feel like, after you sit down and kind of catch your breath and start putting the notes back together, you realize... You've made some progress. You have discovered something valuable. You know that somewhere down there someone is building a dust machine. A dust machine? Yes. Okay. Where is this? I would guess I would know. Um and you find that the minder includes fairly crude descriptions. Instead of giving detailed information to how it works, it keeps naming it, referencing it by name, and mentioning the need for cultists of the hungry deep. But whenever it goes to a mechanical explanation, it references something in the endless library. Which you would know is a place a drow, especially a drow the Vermissian, can get into without too much effort. Might have to be late, but you can still slip in. To uh, Cornelia and Cervasus, uh, Drayvon left the room, disappeared for a moment. Like you'll kind of heard the kind of sharping sound of an opening to the Vermissian. In mere seconds later, you hear that same slurp and a bit of a huff and shout as everyone crawls their way out, pants on the floor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pants on the floor. Why are my no, pants on Not the pants floor? on the floor, like panting, like oh, labored oh. breathing. Like you're sitting on the floor panting, not pants on the floor. I was like, what? When did no. I take off my decent? When did no. I take my pants off? <laughs> Okay, um... That's a crazy thing. Honestly, rewrite it. That's a funnier version. Hello, TikTok! <laughs> <laughs> His long johns. And... Alright. Okay, um, after that, um... <laughs> DM suffers fallout shaken. Not stirred. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah. Y'all hear Dave around the corner just going, <sighs> <sighs> I and about gonna, about this I gonna, point, Cornelia, you're you're not great, but you're a little bit put together. Okay, I'm still under the covers. <laughs> Take all the time you need. Okay. Uh, Cervasus, sorry, cut you off. I was just gonna like lean it my head into uh 
Javon's room. Be like, you, uh, you good, buddy? You okay, buddy? <laughs> um, I will be fine. I just need a moment to catch my breath. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah. I kind of nod and slowly close the door. <laughs> Cervezas, have you met anyone who's used the Vermissian, either Vermissian sages or the Vermissian knights who go down into the heart? Is it probably a Vermissian knight, but never a Vermissian sage. What did they tell you about the Vermissian? Like, what's your knowledge of what's in there? It's all wibbly wobbly. <laughs> so. So, to your perspective, nothing really seems to be the matter. Just another day in the office, essentially, for Drayvon? Uh, the knights uh, probably took it a little better. Like, a little more on the nose. But, uh, I can't, I can't expect a non-knight to, you know, face that kind of thing. And while you're sitting there, or while you're, like, standing there, a bee kind of floats down level with your face. Uh huh. I kind of threw it away. It, like, gently flies back around and lands on your shoulder. Are you wearing your armor? Yes. Is there a gap in the armor anywhere around the shoulder? Like, does it fold down to the neck, or is it like almost seamless to the helmet? You're sleeping in it. No, I remember. Cervezas was already doing his morning routine. Oh, okay. Yes, that's right. Uh, but no, it's it's like a normal suit of armor. It's got like shoulder plates and then a chest plate and then like I, I forget what they're called. Polders or something like that that you put a, around your hips. Okay, it, but it starts... There's not. Yeah. It starts it's crawling up seamless. towards... It starts crawling up towards your face. Uh, I kind of blow at it. Oof. No, you can't hear it. You would almost be convinced it flapped its wings in a pattern that sounded like the word no. <laughs> you just told him no? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Did it sound like Jerry Seinfeld? And I was gonna say, is this a B movie? <laughs> By the known laws of aviation, <laughs> <laughs> a bee should not be able to fly. <laughs> but so it it talks to me essentially right? through its wing flaps. Yes. Cervasus uh, stands up and walks back to his room to pull out another beer. <laughs> It follows, and through this kind of wing buzz communication, you get message for Cervezas, Knight of the Ministry. And I kind of pause, and I go, Okay. It lands on your nose and stings your nose. And when it stings your nose, you hear the words of your magister. <sighs> what did y'all get into down there? You're asking about the weeping. Well, I've done my homework. The Sunlight Collective is up on Ivory Row. And I have a friend who will help get y'all up there. Uh, another one of the Vermissians. Their name is Talon. You'll meet them in about two hours. And apologies for the strange communication method, but we got a new deep apiarist in the group, and I wanted to see what they were capable of. Message by B. Ah, we find ourselves in a brave new era. <laughs> Stay strong so and kind of, put an ice cube on that later. He's like, <sighs> kind of like rubbing his nose and kind of nodding along, like. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, your magister rambles for like 
20 minutes about how amazing the deep apiaries seem to be and how cool the implications are of having someone with bees inside them are for the ministry. Like, you know how tech bros get with like when they talk about NFTs and stuff and how they think they're gonna change the world. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I had I had a friend who was really into Bitcoin when that first started. Yeah, so, you know, that yeah. same kind of energy talking about a deep apiarist. Uh, am beats. I able to overhear this? No, it's all in his head. <laughs> After it stings okay. him, it's all like a mental message. Okay. I sure hope you miss. Uh, tell me about that later. And to your mind, it feels like this goes on for hours, but only a few seconds go by. Well, at the end of it, I'm going to uh, call the other two out into the common area and relay the message of we have a new assignment. Oh, how did you find out? I uh, got a message from the higher ups. How? <laughs> <laughs> tell me. We really want to know. Just tell me. How did you get the message? Uh, um, Cerveza's kind of like rubs his nose for a second and goes, um, uh, um, B. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that something the magister seems to be I'm, interested I'm in? I'm sorry. You told me that you received instructions from the magister via a B? Well, no, yeah. <laughs> About this point, Chillish swings his door open, and you see about 50 dead bees on the floor. Oh. Oh, no! <laughs> Chillish! What uh, did you get? Hey, buddy. Um. Bzz. Do you enjoy yourself a little stack there? Bzz. He shakes his head. And, and you notice he's got, like, a few little bee stings on his hands and apparently he no. just got mad and started killing every bee that came in through the window. Oh. <laughs> how long uh, How long have you been uh, killing all those bees there? You see him start counting and he, oh, what he does is he goes one, two, and then back to the first finger. One, two, one, two. Four two twos. I I get the sense that um, the Magister is trying to get this message over for a really long time, but yeah. after, <laughs> after a bit of chatting, y'all realize it's probably been like since around midnight. <laughs> hours. Hours to the Magister. Okay. Perfect. Love it. Oh my god. That's so funny. Hey, hey, uh, uh, Chillish. Yes. Kill any more bees for me? Okay. Thank you. I I put a little bit of ointment on Chillish's hand for my my healing kit. Chil Chilish claps to say thank you, and then goes, "Ow!" Oh. <laughs> bless him. God bless you, him. You see him go into his room with like a cup and like start scooping the bees up into the cup. What are you, uh, what are you going to do with those bees, Chillish? Trade them. Oh, God. Here's Cervasis, under his breath, mutter, I wonder if you ate them, if you could still hear the message. Doubt it. Uh, <laughs> what do you oh, intend to trade them a... for? I have friend gutter kin. I have bee in heart. Uh, I, I I give him these. He might give me honey. What the that be, Chillish? Uh, okay. You you would understand he's being very literal. Um, yeah. That there is another gutterkin that someone shoved one of the wax simulacra organs of the 
deep apiarist into a young child drow who was then ostracized by society. All right, let him have the bees. I I, I wasn't going to prevent him from... He jumps out the window. I know, I know. I just wanted to know what he was doing with the bees. He just goes out the window of his room and scampers down a pole outside, and you see him running off, and you hear a real faint, Bees! (laughs) Oh, no! (laughs) I'm going to miss that kid. Be safe, Jillish, be safe. God bless you. Um, He's going to be okay, right? Well, I'm sure we'll run into him again eventually. Uh, so you said we had a sub somewhere to be. You said you gotta <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> okay, but you said so. You said to me right that uh the magister said that he was pretty interested in this bee stuff. You would not know that. Um. Well, I don't know how much uh Cervezas okay, has shared I don't yet. Think yeah. I that. That's no. what I'm trying to probe out of you. <laughs> you have so I many questions. questions. That's my uh, question to you. That's they seem pretty interested. I mean, sort of. Oh, All right. I, I guess I guess before we like uh, head off, because I never told the party uh, my findings, right? Why I left off for the vault. Uh, I guess I would like to reiterate what I found out about the dust machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm going to be perfectly honest. I forgot to write that down, except for I. I didn't out tell you machine. a whole lot, except you knew you would have to go <clears throat> to the Indus Library to find out more. Gotcha. The Endless Library? The Endless Library. Oh, Endless. It is not truly Endless, and y'all would know this. It is just, like, the High Elves like to call it Endless, make themselves sound all hoity-toity. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, that they use Cultist of the Hungering Deep as it used the words foci, fuel, and battery interchangeably. And when y'all went to bed, the floors were pretty nice, you know, not new, new, but like not dilapidated and ancient. You would notice there's like a quarter inch layer of dust in here that was not there when y'all went to bed. Hmm. I point at it. Dust machine. Yeah, all over the floor. Like your footsteps are all very clear and visibly seen. May I examine the dust? Oh, yeah. It's just dust. Mix of spire really wall does. and hair and skin and everything else. So, uh, on to which? I'm going to have to look at the map again. Trying to remember which level. The library. If I had a guess, it, it would be near, like, the, um, where all the smarties are. Like, the college? Or the, uh... That's it. I, yeah, the spire is the sa- or the library is the same level as, like, a lot of the universities and stuff, so it's, it's pretty far up there. Yeah, but we have to go to Ivory Row, right? Yes, you do have to go yeah. to Ivory Row, yeah. so you're going up there, we, and then... We were, we were instructed by... Up the there. To, uh... Yes. So, I'm just making a mental note. I would have to, if I want to have more info on this dust machine, I would need to go up there, right? Yes. Um. um. And so, are y'all ready to, like, go out into town and start exploring the city or getting to where y'all want to go? Um. I'm ready. I, uh, I have a notebook with me that I keep my notes in, and I, I make a note of everything everyone told me 
Um, and on my page it says, grand scheme to make the magistrate fall in love with me, I put maybe interested in bees. And now I'm ready to go. <laughs> but I can't be sure because someone wouldn't her. Uh, so, as a if y'all open the door to go down the stairs, like, so it's this little top area, two little flights of stairs, and down into the bar. Um, each of you roll me one d10. And chat, pick a number between 1 and 10. Oh, 10. Even if it's dependent on what chat picks. Yeah, it's for the first time. It just won't matter. <laughs> okay, chat has picked their number. I'm just taking the first number that shows up in chat. Chat pick 10. <laughs> so, do you notice... The stairs are normal. You open the door expecting to see the tavern level of stens in. You find yourself back at the top of the stairs. Mm. And as you look behind yourself, you see yourself at the top of the stairs looking down at yourself. Oh, I hate that. Can I look through the door behind us? Yeah, like, you can see, so... Door, two flights of stairs, door. You're at the bottom. As you look through, you see yourself standing at the top, looking down at you. I was going to say, unfortunately, Whiff, if you look back, you're not, not going to see yourself look back. I walk, I walk backwards up the stairs. You come back out the bottom door next to your party. Okay. Uh, I wave at myself. I walk backwards down the stairs. You excitedly seem to wave at yourself. Y you seem happy to see you. <laughs> hey, Cornelia. <laughs> uh, Wait, like in the same way I waved at me. Yes. Though, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you wave back with the exact same energy. So to your eyes, you seem excited to see yourself. Mm -hmm. um, Cornelia, as you step through, you find yourself at the top, but you don't see. Or sorry. Uh, as you walk back through the top, are you going to walk back through the top door backwards, or are you just going to walk to the top and look down again? Who? Uh, Drayvon. I think, I was going to say, I think you said the wrong name. Yeah, I did. My bad. Uh, so I, I walk towards, let me just uh, re-acclimate myself here. I, we, we, we all walked out, mm -hmm. and we reached the top of the stairs. Yes. And when we look down the stairs, we see ourselves at the top of the stairs. Yes. Okay. I walk backwards up okay. the stairs. Okay. As you walk backwards up the stairs, you find yourself in a hallway. I should not be this high this early in the morning. <laughs> uh, I'm, in a, I'm in the hallway that we just left. No, it's a completely yeah. different hallway. Cool. Wait. Got it. Is, is he now somewhere but where we're not? Yes. All of a sudden, Can, uh, Javon just disappeared. May I copy and do exactly like he did backward? Yes, and you find yourself in a pawn shop a few blocks away. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to reiterate going down the steps a few more times just to make sure we didn't miss something. Yeah, the stairway just keeps repeating. Okay. You get about like a to... half a mile walked in and you're just like, huh. Thought it was I'm in a pawn shop on my own, right? <laughs> yes, you're in a pawn shop completely by yourself. With said diagonally. Frick. <laughs> you freaking frick. <laughs> um I guess I I guess I follow suit. I'm going to slowly walk back up the stairs backwards. You find yourself in front of Chilish's Fountain. Shop. No! I want to be at Chilish's Fountain. Uh, you said I'm just in some in, yeah, in, in a you, hallway? You're in a hallway. Okay. 
there doors in this hallway? Yes, there's a door at each end and four doors to the left and four doors to the right. Stuck in the middle with you. Um... <laughs> Except there's no whiff. It's just... Uh, and, I'm at, and I'm by myself, I'm okay. Myself. Yeah, you are by yourself. Uh, I walk down the hallway and I inspect the first set of doors. I'm assuming it's like they're they're opposite of each other, right? Mm-hmm. As okay. you open the door to the left, it swings open, revealing a large four-poster bed. <laughs> with two Alfir sleeping in it with sleeping mask on. Okay. I check the other door. It's another large four-poster bed with a single Alfir wearing a sleeping mask. Okay. Uh, I continue down the hallway and check the other doors. Each room is about the same, a gorgeous, opulent sleeping chamber with one to seven Alfir per room with sleeping mask on. Okay. I don't wish to disturb the sleeping Alfir, so I'm going to try the door at the end of the hall. It leads to an ice bath chamber. Something the Alfir do to settle their mood. And one of them left a mask. I pick up the mask. It's heavy. Way heavier than you expected. It was golden in appearance. You now realize it's probably made of its weight in gold. That's going in my pocket. <laughs> Is that pocket reinforced? <laughs> He's got uh, his night armor. Oh yeah, you do have access to that now. Um, so yeah, as you put it on, you just like you hold it. It's just like, huh? This is <laughs> heavy. Like, like I'm pretty sure I have like a, uh, like a, uh, a satchel of some description. Okay, yeah. yeah. It goes in like, and it like it kind of clunks when it hits the bottom. My shoulder starts sagging a little bit from the yeah. weight. <laughs> and and you would know, like, there are dark elves who would pay decades of wages to even look at that mask. Oh, oh, and I'm at a pawn shop. <laughs> and in front of you is that same staircase. Going up or down? Going up. Up I go. And you find yourself back in the tavern. Awesome. On the, like, correct level to be in the bar. So you just went up to come out on ground level. I, I figured that's what, how it happened yeah. when I walked up uh, backwards up the stairs. And when you open the door, or when you get through and you look behind you, there are no stairs going down. Oh. Perfect. Cornelia. Puzzle complete. Yeah. You find yourself in a pawn shop. It hasn't okay. opened yet. Oh. <laughs> Is there anything good in there? Uh, give me a d10. Oh. Can I get hurt if I do? No. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. One d10. Oh! <laughs> a 10. Find. I need to grab one of the documents real quick. He's like, no shot. <laughs> A little. I'm a little caught off guard. Um, <laughs> but always prepared. <laughs> not that document. Not that document. Come on. Where is it? Sorry. That's okay. I'm. Oh. I, I am a smidge on. Wait. Where is it? Did I move it to a different window? Um. Yes, I did. Nope. Not what I was looking for. <laughs> I don't think you'll realize how many Spire resources I have open right now. I was going to say, I really do just imagine um, just like 97 tabs. <laughs> Let's see, that's City of Mist. That's not what I need right now. Or it's like Charlie's board like, and everything's connected with red string. That's the inside of my head. <laughs> 
all connected. Okay, give me a second. I have to go. F okay, no, I know what it's called. Um, I just have to reopen the file. Give me a second. Um, into my file manager. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, guys, I'm a professional DM. That's okay. Will you look? I'll serenade them with the Kenny Rogers. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, <laughs> <You found it! laughs> yes. Immediately. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was opening it like pretty much as you started speaking. You fine? Yeah, it was pretty good. A, a small jet black cube carved from an unidentified substance with a simple button top. Ooh, would I know what this does? No, but the second you touch the box, it's begging you to open it. Please open us, open us. Press the button. Oh. Press the button. I press the button. We have such <laughs> sights to show you. Oh, I, I messed up. I already know, but I also. You press the button, and it spins, and impossible shapes and geometries come out of it as it unfurls and unfolds in front of you. Revealing millions upon millions of facets and sides and shapes that cannot exist in angles that defy your understandings and foundings of logic and math. As this shape expands far beyond its physical boundaries and borders and the even edges of common sense. A single word appears in your mind. Come. Come? Come. Come to the door. Bad, uh, bonk, like approach. I didn't say I said it's a calm. B A L M, calm. No, it was like C O M, like approach. Yeah, like approach. Come here. Open the door. Okay, I do. And as you do, you see the outside of the spire from the inside of the spire. Oh hell! What? <laughs> oh, what is that shape called? It's a uh, something glass. Oh, uh, oh, I, I think this is a raspberry pie that I found. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you look around outside and, like, you are somehow miles away from the spire, further than any drow has been in centuries. Why did I open this? I rolled a I 10. Know. Okay. But you're still in the pawn shop. You have not crossed the threshold. Oh, phew. I'm just looking. Yeah. Okay. And in a moment, the view moves. Okay. You are now staring at the pulsing, beating heart at the base of the spire, a source of madness and unreality. Okay. But you find yourself protected from the unreality and the forces it may convey from out here. Uh, do I... Uh, understand what I'm looking at? You would remember stories from when you were a child. Okay. And some stern warnings from your magister during training. Oh. oh, magister. What did he say? Darn, if anyone ever tells you to go down to the harp, you tell them to kick rocks. Uh, you don't go down magister. to the harp. <laughs> All tentacles and extra eyes, extra teeth, teeth where teeth don't belong. Doors go into where doors don't go, go into where doors don't go, go into where doors don't go, go into where doors don't door to where doors door door. Oh, uh, okay. I think, can I close the cube? As you close the door, it, it comes closer and then opens the other way, back towards you. Okay. And it shows you the room you just stayed in. From... The inn? Yes, from the inn. The bedroom where I went Just, to hell? Yes, you see that room. May I close the door? Is, you, is the room normal? Yes, the room looks perfectly normal. I've been burned before. Okay. Um, <laughs> I suppose... Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm cracking up because of Thicor to chat. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many doors there are. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I'll go, I'll go in. 
As you step in, the space and time around you warps and folds and bends, and you find yourself in the room you just were, with the cube in your hand. Okay, I rush to the door and open the door. Is it a normal door? Yes, it is a normal door. Oh, God. Okay, uh, I'm going to pocket the cube, and I'm going to go into the common room. Okay, it seems fine. All right, is um, Draybon there? Uh, he, he's already made it down below to the tavern. Okay, can I head that? I'm way? sorry, you would not know that, but you know the stairs are to your left to go back down to the tavern. Right, where we were trying to go originally. Yes. But yeah, I'm gonna try and go there. You get there just fine. Oh. Cervasus. <laughs> you find yourself staring at the fountain where Chillish liked to chill and hide with his little boom tube. Forgot about the boom tube. It's a boom tube. Racist <laughs> just kind of nods, goes. This isn't the bar. It's it distinctly and, uh, is not. <laughs> turns around and starts heading back toward Stinzen. You walk for a moment and then you find yourself walking right back to the fountain. It's in front of you again. It worked once, so walk backwards away from the fountain towards Stinson. Um, how much attention are you paying as you walk backwards? Are you looking or are you just blindly walking backwards? That's a good question. Knowing Cervezos, he'd be walking backwards without looking. You, you feel the back of your knees hit the fountain? Um, give me a D10 for trying to correct your balance as you go to tump into it. Uh, I would say if you have the... And I don't really think there's a great domain for this, so let's just say, yeah, I need to... Okay, you managed to correct yourself, and you don't fall in. If you turn around to look, there's not water in this fountain. There's stars, endless stars and blackness as far as you can see. I scoop some of the stars with my hand. What? It, it feels warm. Kind of thick and sludgy. Hot pudding. I kind of like splash it a little and then turn away from it. As you might have just cast countless civilizations to their deaths, your little splash. Um. You find yourself walking. You notice as you like start paying a bit more attention because you realize something is weird. It's fountains in every direction. Hmm. Do I still have the bee? Oh yes, the bee is still in your hand. Or still on you, like you can grab the bee. Which way do you think I should go? <laughs> the bee kind of like looks around on your hand, looks up, looks down, and just kind of rolls over onto its back. Then I roll onto my back. <laughs> As you do so, you look at the ceiling. And you would normally know the, a layer above you in the spire looks like a series of connected catwalks, rope, duct tape, and prayers. Mm -hmm. It's a solid plank. And you would know that is not natural this far down. I try jumping toward it. So when you feel yourself kind of float up to it, 
touch it, and it feels like a bar. A bar counter you've been at. And you find yourself just kind of waking up on a stool at Sten's End. Okay. I, uh, I look down at my hand to see if the bee is still there. The bee is still there. I nod in appreciation at it. It kind of butt waggles on your hand and kind of climbs up to your shoulder. So now that we're all back together, uh, I ask uh, if anybody else had a nice trip. Uh, <laughs> um... I say that I'm just really, really confused, and I told I tell them about how I the heart of the spire, and then I show my cube. When you all see the cube, you both hear, "Press the button. The button must be pressed." Oh, but I hold it like a football <laughs> player with my hand out, and I say, "Look, guys, I don't yeah. think you want to press this." Press <laughs> the button. Is that thing sentient? Uh... It's push the button the end. Okay. <laughs> that, that push it. That, that answers that question. Push uh, our button. Cordelia, never press that button ever again. Uh, oh, my finger is the button and my eyes are wide and then I look up uh, at Trayvon. I was like, oh yeah, no. <laughs> of course not. Uh, uh, actually, uh... do you want it? To, Tuck like... that away. I want you to hold on to that. Okay. Tuck it away. Do not press that button. Press the button. Push the button. <laughs> I put the button in my medical kit, which is. Pretty yeah. Heavy as as you keep like, so what you hear. Push, push, push the button. Push, push the button. No. <laughs> I I say shut up, and I put it in the bag. Push the button up. <laughs> Should I? Push the button. <laughs> Guys, should I push this button right now? Um, yes. Yes, you should. Push the button. Don't let the intrusive thoughts win. Uh, Racist is working. going to reach out to see if he can hold it. Yeah, I hand it, I hand it to you. I say, but okay, don't push it. The button wants to be pushed. Push. The racist the... brings it up to his ear and shakes it like a Christmas present. <laughs> the button does not rattle. The button wants to be pushed. Would I recognize the button's voice? No. Does the button have an aura? Pure black. Oh, uh, and I, of course, know that means... You've never seen that before. Ah. Uh... I snatch the box and he goes, it's empty. <laughs> I snatch the box and I tuck it away. You all cannot be trusted with that. The button wants to be pushed. Push the button. Push the button. I wrap it in several layers of cloth. Push the button. And I tuck it down. <laughs> at the, and I tuck it down and I push it at the bottom of my satchel. If you toss something I, into the remission, we'll, does it ever we'll really come back anymore? to that one later? What was that? <laughs> it was Cervasus musing oh, aloud. Okay. What was the musing? I said, if you toss something into the remission, does it ever really exist anymore? Good question. <laughs> the I didn't is... hear you because he became the button for a second. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, button <laughs> possession occurred. Uh... <laughs> We lost him. <laughs> and Thy says, uh, point, would like to point out that uh, technically Drayvon did use the word push to describe what they did with the button, but uh, I know what the intent the was. I'm not of, going to yeah. be that DM. <laughs> he uh, pushed it from a different side. <laughs> well, we'll get back to that later. <laughs> what, what did you guys see where you were? Uh, well, I walked down the hallway. Um... 
encountered a couple of uh, sleeping Alf here. And uh, I took uh, an ice bath. You took an ice bath? Yeah. You're a dark elf, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it would I, still I, feel I, nice. I was. It was not typically comfortable, but I didn't hate it. I I uh I look at him with a little bit of judgment in my eyes because, um, as Lejean, we uh kind of look down on that kind of, you know, excess type stuff. But you know, and put that in the back of my pocket. That thought. You hear the the little box with the button rattling around in the bag. Oh, this is boy. <laughs> Well, I look at Drew Bond. Use the button. Do you want to push the button? I want to push the button, I, but I, I'm I scared of this button. retrieve the box, unwrap it, and hand it back to. Push the button. Thank oh, you for uncovering Jesus. the button. Push the button. <laughs> I put the button in the middle of the room, and I get a uh, broom from behind the bar. Uh, and I stand as far back as I can. Coward! Push the button! Uh, I kick the button into the wall, and I said, Who are you talking to? Okay, I'm gonna be funny because you kicked it into the wall. The cube has six sides. If I roll a six it, it on this D6, yeah. If we roll a six, the six... <laughs> hold Do on, it. let me pull... No, Do hold it. on, let me pull it up so I can watch it. Do it. Alright, go ahead. Oh, um... Uh, it's being finicky. Sorry. One six. Oh my god. <laughs> it lands with the button facing skyward as it slides to the floor. Alright. I'll push I the will... button. I, I <laughs> say... is going to go pick it up and put it into his pocket. We oh can my talk god. about the button later. I don't know. I think this button needs needs attention now. Cornelia's <laughs> right. Push the button. Unless you can keep the button quiet. Do you think you can figure out I how to have get a, it quiet? I have a feeling that box... Button, you like the leg gratification, right? No, I like pushing the button. Alright, let's all push it on the I push the button if you shut up? I don't want to push the button. I can't shut up. I can only tell you to push the button. This is why I wanted uh... to wrap it up and put it at the bottom of my satchel. <laughs> I, I don't want to push the button. You can the push the button if loud. you want. I'm oh, not going to prevent you... Can you um, put the button in the vermisium? That's what I was saying earlier. <laughs> well, I mean, I could technically, like, put it in the vermisium and go with the ball or whatever. I don't. I I have other priorities. Larid, mm -hmm. may I ask, would we be remiss if we were to uh, put it in the vermisium? Like, would we mess up anything? I don't know. I can't ask that. Okay, that, that's fair. Well, no, I genuinely oh. don't know. The button is, yeah. like, from pulling back the curtain, it's a random number generator, pretty much. I don't Oh, wanna, so we don't I, even... I don't want to push the button. I don't want you to push the button. Now is not the appropriate time to be pushing random buttons on random <laughs> boxes that we have no idea what it does. All right. Is there so any... for now, why don't you run to the vault, put it in your vault, and then we'll come I'm, back to it when I'm we want. Sure to I've push already the been. I'm pretty sure I've already been to the vault today. I don't yeah. know if I can um, go back. I'll let you go back. Like, oh, can it's, you only go once? You uh, can only go once to confer mastery on rolls per session. I believe it is, but I will. You, but to go to use it as like a storage site, I am fine with you going back. You can okay. just like lift the hatch and toss it in. I don't think it works like that. But, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> like, I have to actually travel to and then travel back. Um, that is true. You do how that. fast that travel can take place, I don't. From the outside, it almost always feels instant. Yeah. Unless it doesn't. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to put it into words and how traveling to the vault works. Um, 
I I would still prefer to kind of just like put All right. the box away. Uh, I'll go keeps, put it in my room. If it keeps talking, no, don't leave it alone by anybody else, because somebody else can pick it up and push uh, the button. I don't want to leave this with Chillish nearby. I, f I feel like I could trust Chillish. I, <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just kidding. I think Chillish is one of the last people I would trust with this. Exactly. Oh, Chillish sweet. would push that button immediately. Uh, I, I, I would like to take the box and keep it safeguarded on my person. Okay. okay. I can so tune out the box. I can tune out the push the button noise if I need to. Okay. Push the button. <laughs> so, anyways. Uh, so we were supposed to be heading to where exactly? Yeah, again? what were we doing? <laughs> we were heading to Ivory Room. Okay. Yes, but how are you getting there? Which is Pretty far away. Uh, I, I'm sure I have a map somewhere, right? Uh, your magister might have told you earlier today before yeah. uh, unreality happened. Yeah, we really, we really. So messages. someone, someone got that message. Not I feel me, like I and remember. I don't. I don't yeah, the B. Something about I going did to the call. Well, did, not you are sitting there message. talking. Um, a tall, slender drow comes in the room. <sighs> Talon, party of three. Your ride has arrived. Ah, uh, that's our uh, contact. Perfect. Right. Not quite man with a gun, but Vermissian Sage with an axe to grind. Oh, that's right. That's a Vermissian Sage. Always a pleasure to see a fellow like-minded individual. He runs over and grasps you by the shoulder, Drayvon. Have you all met? No, I don't believe we have. Fingus? <laughs> Do my ears betray me, or did y'all find a whispering cube? Oh, uh, you wouldn't believe. I don't know what you're talking about. Did it tell you to push it's the button? Pocket. No! What are you doing? Maybe. Why? What do you know about pushing buttons? They're fun. We used to... Wait. We we made a few dozen of these um a long time ago. And uh, we toss them around at parties still. What? It's a party toy? Yeah, we got a fun idea of a good time. But they're old. Like, first generation Vermissian Sage old. I'm actually kind of surprised they're still around. I found it at a pawn shop. but Who pawned didn't... that off? <laughs> I mean, it didn't seem like a toy. I saw the... I saw the heart. They are not toys. It did not seem fun. Wait, we put safety regulations on that thing. Yeah. Pretty much. Travel interdimensional. Pretty much, we played a drinking game. You took a shot. You pushed the button. You ran through wherever it appeared. You stole something and got back before the door closed. <laughs> oh, I like that. Well, maybe we'll play later. Drayvon and I take a look at it first. But, um. Well, we got. Uh, he pulls out like Javon, you'll be familiar with. He pulls out the map of the Vermissian. And it does not properly exist in three dimensional space, so you all kinda get a headache looking at it. Ugh. Like the Klein bottle. Yes, like I a Klein bottle. I put it in the thing for those who don't know. <laughs> like a four dimensional shape or something that's not belonging to our reality. And He puts on these special glasses, and you see him just, like, snapping his fingers throughout various points in this map. So we go from here to here to here to here to here. And we skip the big old hole in reality right there. Everyone good? Mm -hmm. You two been in the Vermissian before? Yeah, no. They are looking uh, at you, too. Yeah. Pointing that out. 
I have not. Unless <sighs> maybe and possibly. Oh boy. <laughs> First timers, am I right, Drayvon? I try not to blame him too much. He pulls out this, like, greenish rope and wraps it around your waist, Cornelia, and then hands okay. another length of it to you, Drayvon, to wrap, you know, implying that you should do the same with, uh, Cervasis. He then pulls a dagger out and stabs the air in front of him and rips open a hole into the Vermissian. After you. So, uh, Talon kind of guides you up to the threshold of this hole, Cornelia, tells you, go. What? Go, just jump. O okay, I, uh, uh. As you're stumbling, he just, like, Sparta kicks you in the back. Oh, I thought we had something when you tied the rope around. And then I. And then he backflips in behind you. <laughs> this guy's a freak. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dravon, are you going to go first? Or are you going to let Cervasis go first between the two of you? I look at Cervasis and I kind of like gesture. You get in. Cervasis picks up Dravon and jumps in. Okay. <laughs> Gravity feels somewhat meaningless as y'all enter. Um, concepts of up, down, left, right, forward, back, passage of time all melds into this opalescent green kind of this funk that you see and feel in the air around you. I've already had this once today. It's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew that egg wasn't fully cooked. You hear the sound of a train screeching in the distance. An, nope. An errant um... wheel just rolls past your vision. Talon goes, this way, guys, is he, from the perspective of your entrance, is, like, swimming down. Am I tied to Talon? Yes. All right. I, I simply allow <laughs> whatever happens to happen. Okay. I would like each of you to give me another D10. Um... Trevon, or sorry, yes, Trevon, you may give me two D10. Perfect, okay. That didn't work for some reason. Oh, it did. No, it didn't. Let me delete that. I need to use the restroom, so it'll be right back. Okay. Oh, I can't uh, quit it! We will actually use that as our break. I'm going to pause the recording for a minute, guys. We're going to take, like, ten minutes, and we'll get back to this. Perfect. Alrighty. So, uh... When last we left, y'all were descending through the Vermissian with the help of uh, Talon. Never mind the fact you actually have to go up in the spire. Apparently, up in the spire today is down in the Vermissian. Makes sense. Especially what we just went through. I think it makes sense. Perfect sense. And it's relatively uneventful, but Talon does bring y'all by his vault. For a quick chat. In a snack. In a breast. What was the roll for again? Oh, uh, the roll was just for a reason. You'll find out in okay. due time. Gotcha. Reason? No reason? Nothing? Uh, the roll was because the DM likes the sound of dice. I don't get to hear the dice. <laughs> what is that melody? <laughs> there, I've appealed to my Overwatch fans. Checkmark. <laughs> um... Have we already missed any references tonight? A few. Um, but, uh... As y'all enter the vault, and gravity kind of realigns with what you know as gravity. Um, You notice that it actually looks into the top of the endless library. 
He's found one of the few points where the Vermissian and reality shove up against each other. Most of them are doors. He chose to put a one-way window. A one-way mirror. So we can look down on everyone walking around the inside of the library. And as he stops, he turns to y'all. Um, first, everyone okay? Uh, I don't feel great. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, <laughs> Did you find a note on your vault door earlier today? Or last time you checked it, let's put it that way. Um, I did, yes. What did it say? Um, I pull out the note. And I hand it to them. Ah, uh, players speak for I didn't take a note. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I will be honest, I don't have note taking things Fair. with me. I've been taking That's some actually notes. entirely a lie. Um, uh, I've, been taking, I'm, I've been taking here, some notes. I'm too lazy. All... That particular one, I just okay. Yeah, no. I, I that was mostly a tease. I know like I don't expect y'all <laughs> to take fastidious notes. This isn't a college course yet. Uh, <laughs> all houses in which men have lived and suffered and died are haunted houses. MRR. Um, that's what it said. Yeah. I remember yes. that now. It was, uh, it's in my notes. I have the same thing. He pulls out a nearly identical letter. And the the other sages are finding similar notes and other weird things. Y'all keep getting stuck in like an old school house? What? Um... I mean, kind of. I wouldn't necessarily say stuck in. I've definitely even encountered uh, a hallway or two. Yeah, well, some of the sages are going in, and they haven't come out. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I was hoping with both notes and two sages here with the library, we might be able to figure something out. Uh, can I take both of those pages, the notes there, or letters, uh, and kind of, like, cross-examine them? Yes, they... See if there's any, like, differences? Um, yes, roll investigate. Um, and occult, if you have, which I believe you do. I do, I have both. Yeah, so you have investigate occult, so yeah, roll that. And my knack is in decryption, so... Yes, and I will let you use your knack. So you roll with mastery. Technically, I could give you more than 4d10 here, but 4d10 is supposed to be the cap of rolling, so roll 4d10. 4d10. Yes. Um, oh, there's a 10. Oh, nice. Huh. I'm thinking about one of the consequences of you technically rolling a 10, or one of the, like, effects. You're supposed to apply stress to the target of the roll. I'm thinking. Okay. Um, you can tell they are distinctly the same handwriting. The same person wrote both these letters. Same handwriting, same paper quality. Yep. That they are like ripping these out of a journal. And as you turn them over, you you, know, you think journal, you're kind of thumbing through. It's a phone book. Or you as a player would recognize as a phone book, as what Drayvon sees is a yellowed page with names and numbers scrawled on the other side of it. Okay. And one is page 75, the other is page 240. And the year on the page says it's from 1970. Good year. Is that a year that would make sense to us? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It is year 275 to y'all's time scale. Okay. 
I I'm of like the the kind of person that will just take things as they are, right? So what I, I if I see something that is completely out of the realm of my own existence, say these yellow pages, uh, because I'm assuming there's like their names that are just unrecognizable to me. They don't really mean anything to you would like, recognize the names as like human naming conventions from the few humans you've met yeah uh the numbers mean nothing if there are addresses i would think it would be some type of like code or something like that it wouldn't necessarily make complete sense to me but because of who i am as like an individual i just roll with it to me, this seems like whoever wrote these just took the closest piece of paper they could write on at hand to write this note down. Okay, um, second. Um, words, where got to, were we? Um. You were, I, we just compared the two yep. pages. Of, okay, uh, yeah, they were identical. Yeah. Um, Talon looks in. Huh. Hmm. <sighs> That's what I was concerned about, because we have more. He opens a filing cabinet drawer and just hundreds of pages there, the exact same spill out. For weeks, sages have been finding these on their vault doors. One Lejon went to a prayer session and found this tape to their forehead. Seems like anything that causes conscience or subconscience to leave reality marks you by whatever this is. So I think I have but one important thing to ask. Will y'all help me research this real quick before we get, finish our trip? I'm game. We're, we're at the Endless Library right now, right? Uh, you, are a, you cannot quite access it. You are in his vault, which is a library of its own right. Gotcha. Okay. I misheard it earlier then. So yeah, you were, you were <laughs> a, a few inches above it in reality. Like... He has found one of those tears in reality and stuck a window in so we can look down on. So how this is gonna work is everyone rolls if you have a D10, roll one D10. If you have the occult skill, roll two D10. Um or yeah, occult is a skill. I keep wanting to call it a domain, but it is a skill. Occult is a occult domain. Is a so domain. occult is a yeah, if you have a cult, roll two. If you have investigate, roll three. And I will say, if you have pursue, because you are pursuing knowledge, you can also add that instead if you don't have uh, investigate. And if you have religion, you can roll religion instead of a cult. Okay, so if you have religion, you can take a 2d10? Yeah. Okay. Messy. Now, after you've all picked your dice, remove one. Remove one? Yes, remove one die. Okay, so if I had 2d10, it's 1d10. Yeah. What if you only had 1d10? Uh, you would roll 1d10 and treat the result as one step lower uh, than it was before. It didn't work. Yeah. Well, that's not good. I don't know why mine won't work. Um, yet yet to see the command pop up. Yes, yeah, slash yeah. roll. What I like to do is slash roll oh, tab and then one type it in. There we go. Eight. Yes. Okay. So let me do some DM background business real quick. I think we're still waiting on decaf. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah, Decaf Rolled Sick. Oh, 
So yeah, what we do. Oh, I, did, I didn't see that. Sorry. My background DM business. So um, <laughs> do, 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 that's it. That so. I was like, I'm pretty sure I rolled. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Oh. Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I am in awe of how lucky Dub just got on that roll. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Um. Really good fallout. Um, avoided fallout by a hilariously low stress roll. <laughs> like, perfect. Excellent. Uh. So. Combined, you all feel the mental strain of this research. It it kind of oh. <laughs> like weighs you all down. But through your combined efforts and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, coursing through books, taking what feels like an eternity, y'all find a single you find two references. And instead of I'm going to read a bit of a script here, so forgive me for a moment. You find two references to the house, both quite contradictory. One is about the supposed original owner, a human, named Philip Harlick. He had this house built at the edge of the spire. And a long time ago, he went mad. Never leave the house. He told his friends, all of whom he eventually pushed away over the course of a year or two, that there were always more rooms in the house to see. Always more halls to walk. Eventually, he disappeared altogether. Other owners took possession and moved in over the years. All reported the house was haunted. Various exorcists and experts were called in. First three failed, the fourth died. Last owner claimed it's not even a house anymore before disappearing mysteriously. Most drow assumed it was just the fact humans didn't live that long. No one has lived there for a long time. Very long time. It's been cordoned off for years, but it's disappeared. The other, more esoteric source says it's always existed. It always will exist. It stretches between every layer of reality, filling in the cracks and seeping into whatever metaphysical pits it can find. And that Philip was not the owner or progenitor of the house, but just the poor, hapless person that was anchor for a while. But you notice the source just kind of drones on and on about how the house is the dark, fundamental force of the universe that more takes on the appearance of a house than actually is a house. It's like an animal that uses a part of its own body to lure and prey. It also says the house's outward appearance looks different in the other locations it extends into, fitting in with local context. To top it all off, someone has written in that section of the book, scrawled over and over in what you think is blood. The house hates you. That's familiar. I don't recognize it. Really? I think I was the only one who was able to see uh. the full uh, transcript of it. Mm -hmm. That's familiar. I uh, I I, I I repeat back the uh the phrase that I saw at the the, the above with uh Cordelia's bed. Yeah, the house invites you in. That's what it said. There was more than that. I didn't take notes. I'm asking the DM to. Yes, DM. sorry. Uh, <laughs> to repeat. The house invites you in. The house hates you. The house wishes to be left alone. The house is lonely. The house is in pain. The house wants your pain. The house hates you. 
Our research didn't say where the house was located. Everywhere and nowhere. Ah, yes. Everywhere and nowhere. Yeah, it's both in and out of reality simultaneously. And also, as you sit there and talk about it, you notice there's now a second door leaving the vault, right next to the first one. One is kind of the standard Vermissian gray and green door. The other is ornate in wood with a large golden handle. Um, would we recognize these doors? You would recognize the Vermissian door. You've all now seen a few of these. Okay. Talon just kind of, in a daze, goes up to the gold handle door. Um, I reach out and I prevent them from, like, approaching the door. No, I pull him back on that rope. Yeah. Uh, I'm a Talon. Oh, yeah. Is he connected to both of us? Uh, no, it's, uh... Oh, no, he's connected yeah, to, to... Yeah, he's connected to Whip. I thought yeah, I was Cornelia, connected no, to... No, you're connected to, uh... To, uh then, yeah. Then I do that. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, you succeed. He kind of thumps to the floor. Frail man. Oh, sorry. Door. Two doors. Three doors down. Two, two doors. One entrance. Two doors. One entrance. You see him trying to like scratch it out on the floor. How this would work? What's behind that door? We don't need to know right now. If we get back to the mainland, I'll let you go through any door you want. <laughs> he goes, I'll make a deal. Can I open it if I don't go through it? Does the door have a key slot? Yes, Can it I, does. Can uh, I ground myself in such a way that he can't go in the door without it? Yeah, you can, Am like... I limited? I, I would like to approach the door. What's that? Oh, kind of one at a time. You're kind of starting to... Sorry. No, it's okay. Just kind of getting on top of each other. So I just want to make sure everyone gets a chance yeah. to speak. Um, Cervasis. I was just going to say, from my limited understanding of third... No. Fourth dimensional uh, spaces, opening the door is the same as walking through the door. If there's anything we have learned today, it's that you don't have to walk through something for it to happen to you. You're probably not wrong. Drivon, is the door on the outside of the door, too? As far as I can tell, yes. As you lean your head out into the Vermissian, yes, that door is on the outside of it. Okay, what if we get into the Vermissian and then open it? Does that make y'all feel better? I just want to know what's on the other side. All right, but I'm hunkering down. I mean, if he wants to open the, the door, I'm not going to stop him. The nature of the Vermissian makes me think that maybe it's safe because two fourth dimensional objects can't exist within each other. I like the way you think. <laughs> he flings like open that. his main door and like tumbles out into the Vermissian and just kind of yanks uh, Cornelia along. My God! <laughs> you kind of bungee cord around the inside of the space of unreality, narrowly missing the last train, removing your head. And once you're all out, he goes up and opens the door. And this is what all see. Dang it. I'll give me a second. Did not work quite right. We'll get there. <laughs> um, second. And yes, I know the screen went black for y'all. Chat, that was intentional. I do not want y'all to see my file, organize file organization. <laughs> what file organization? Exactly. <laughs> and this. Wrong one. Dang it. Um. <laughs> 
it works, but it's not what I meant to share. Um, if y'all see a room that looks like that, but what you see is this. Oh, I hate it. Which, uh, Cornelia, you would recognize is like, if the room you had been in earlier had been through a very poorly done remodel. The, the... The parlor room. That you were in earlier. Like, you mean the pawn shop, or you mean the, the dark room? The dark room you were in when you woke up. If that room had aged a month and went, and went through a very tacky remodel, this is what you would see. Uh, can I look around to see if I see the... The writing? Not yet. Everything seems kind of normal from this distance looking in. Okay. Would it help to see if we had more light? It might. Okay. I would like to go ahead and add some light. Moonlight, I mean. <laughs> The, my core abilities. the light lights up the Vermissian, making it kind of cozy, but it seems to stop at the threshold. Mm. Is it just me me and Talon, or is everybody in? Everyone's outside now, right? Like, y'all can all, or in the Vermissian, like, y'all can see into this now? Yeah, we're all, right. we're all... Yeah. Standing outside of the okay. door that just was open, and this is what we all see. Okay. Uh, everything in my instincts tells me that we need to shut that door. Okay. I I want to make sure I tell everyone that I recognize it is as the dark room. And I also want to let everyone know that I saw something written on the wall in my own handwriting. And it said... Something. I'll send it to you later. If you didn't have it fully okay. written out. Um, I was going to say, it says something to the effect of someone's wandering. It, like, it, in full honesty, it was a quote from an Edgar Allan Poe story. <laughs> um, yeah. Horseback in the country view of the melancholy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, but it was my handwriting, and that's what I want everyone to know. There you go, bud. So as you look at it, it the door starts to shimmer and start to close on its own. Talon looks at you and goes, do we go in? Uh, no. We go I in think, tomorrow. I think we have more pressing matters. But the research could be in there. Why do you think there's research in there? It's a space that exists outside reality. We're in a space that exists outside reality. How do the two coincide? Uh, How much unreality is there? How much is there outside what we see, touch, feel, and understand? Don't you want to know? Doesn't it keep you up at night? You just said... See, the way I deal with... That other sages have... Not returned. Disappeared. Look, mm -hmm. I have. All I don't want to be one of those sages. Yeah, I had a very bad experience. Uh, you can't pay me to go in there. Oh, I don't think I need to pay. Go want to go back. It's left its seed in your head. That knowledge is there. That question must be answered. I cut the rope that's attached to Cornelia. <laughs> Don't do that. If you want to go in there, don't do by, that. By all means, go in there. Talon goes, okay. He tosses you his Vermissian carbine. Wait, wait. What if I say before you go, what if uh, I tell you I'll give you the cube instead if you don't go in? Oh, no. You don't, you don't, you don't have the cube. I, I want to you see what's in there. And he just like charges in and the door disappears behind him. Oh lord, he's got space madness. <laughs> he so, didn't take us there. We're not to the location we need to be. Yeah, he is. You our notice y'all's ropes are pulling down on their own. 
Oh, we don't love that. Okay. And after a few moments, like it takes a bit. The ropes aren't that fast, but the ropes guide you to where you need to be, and out you spit at Ivory Row. Interesting. Okay. Um, That's not how I understood that worked, but I'll uh, take it. Yeah. <laughs> I pour uh, a little out in respect of our... our you would know that, <laughs> that they're called guide ropes. Mm. Oh, that's true. And they are very literal. They are made in two different parts of the spire and brought together through the Vermissian. And long as you were in one, it will take you to the other. Oh. Fair enough. So they're good for a return trip. Okay, good, good, good. So we can go back to visit Chillish when all this is over. Well, your problems are still in Red Row. You just came down here yeah. to ask some questions. Is that uh is Talon like gone or will will his portion of the rope bring him back as well? You don't I know. I don't think we'll see Talon again. Man, I you guess. might. I, I I think this is what the I think this is what the note was talking about. I think this is what the transcription was talking about. He did say that sages have disappeared after seeking this out. Um, I think he had a one-way trip in, through that doorway. Man, so is that and, the and haunted it's, house? And it's the reason why I cut your rope tying you to him, because I did not want you to get sucked through, to get pulled through. Yeah, I wouldn't have been a fan of that. I apologize for my silence for a second. I'm looking for something real quick. Um, Here. So. We have a task that we need to accomplish. Whatever was through that doorway was not going to help us achieve our task. So next session, uh, we will pick up at Ivory Row and the question y'all need to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Everybody, thank y'all for watching. I hope to see y'all next time. I'm going to end the recording here. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next one.